Carter Seatrip, starring Gary Moore. Thank you so much, and good evening, friends. Welcome to another edition of I've Got a Secret. Without further delay, let's meet the members of our Sterling panel. They are, of course, Bill Cullen and Betsy Palmer and Henry Morgan and Bess Myers. Now, is our Sterling panel ready to play our Sterling game? Uh, yeah. Let's then welcome our first contestant. Would you come in, please, sir? Now, sir, will you shout to our panel your name and where you are from? My name is David Shepard, and I'm from Washington, D.C. Mr. Shepard. He is from Washington, D.C. Now, Mr. Shepard has a secret, and we will show it to you. Here we go. Wow. Panel, with your keen eyes, you have no doubt noticed that there is a typewriter on the stage. And Henry, since you are the fastest typist of our panel, and as I told you before we went on the air that you would be required to do some typing tonight, I would like you to have, have you go sit at the typewriter, if you will. Do not touch the typewriter until so requested. Now, Henry, once we start our questioning, we will ask you to start typing on any given subject. It doesn't matter. Whatever comes into your head. Just continue typing throughout the game. The, the sentences need not be related just so long as you keep on typing. All right? Now, by the way, the typewriter is set for all capital letters and double spacing. Please keep it that way. All right? The clue concerns something that Dr. The Mr. Shepard, I'm sorry, invented. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We'll start the question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Doctor, uh -huh. doctor. No, I'm not a doctor. Matter of fact, he isn't. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's not a doctor? No, he's no, not. When do I start? We'll start the questioning with Bess Myers. Something what, though? Well, we were so busy all Wait, is something? Something he invented. He invented. Mm -hmm. He invented Henry. Does it have anything to... He didn't invent Henry. <laughs> Somebody else was responsible for that. But, uh, doc, uh, Mr. Shepard, I'm sorry, does it have something to do with the typewriter? Only indirectly. Indirectly. Um, is it important to know um, if there is another object involved besides the typewriter? Yes, it there is. There is. Is it an inanimate object? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Is it similar to the typewriter? Does it look like the typewriter? No, it does not. Is it... Uh, $20 down, $60 to go, and we go, please, to Bill Cullen. Mr. Shepard, did the thing you invent, uh, you invented, is it that uh, thing backstage making all the noise? Yes, it is. Is it a s serious type thing or a tongue-in-cheek type thing? No, it's very serious. Quite serious. serious, yes. Is it like an analyzer of a type? An yes. Yes. Do, will it analyze the things that Henry is typing out? Yes, it will. Is it, there's more? I thought that was yes. pretty good. Uh, uh, will it analyze them? Uh, would it help me to know how it will analyze, or, or in what way it will analyze the Henry's thoughts? Uh, yes, somewhat. Mm -hmm. All right, $40 down, $40 to go. Well, the last $40 will be completely riding on the shoulders of Miss Betsy Palmer. Yeah. What a ride. Well, what a ride, <laughs> Jim. Um, this has to do... Uh, is it something like an IBM machine? It's something like an IBM well, machine. It's Henry... something like an IBM machine, except to Mr. Shepard, that IBM is a dirty Naughty word. word. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Shepard. Well, is it Remington? Is something no, like that? Our no. company is Farrington. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> good. That's good. Well, this measure um, Henry's IQ in any way? Well, it might in an uh, indirect way. I doubt but if the machine has been invented. Yes, it can so do. <laughs> All right, and so we've blown the complete $80. Panel, you have gone down to defeat. Now, first of all, let us ask Henry to stop typing. Henry, I will relieve you of the piece of paper which you have. I'll ask you to take the chair back behind your desk. I'll take the typewriter back here. To clear the stage for better pictures. Now, Henry, we asked you to type something because Mr. Shepard's secret is he invented a machine that can read what you typed. <laughs> Mr. Shepard is vice president in charge of research and development for the Farrington Manufacturing Company. The noise you have been hearing backstage is the machine that we borrowed from the Air Research and Development Command 
of the Air Force. Now, what is the purpose of this machine, sir? Well, the purpose of this machine is to eliminate the necessity of somebody typing information into punched cards. The machine can read in the same manner as the human eye does and do the whole operation of punching this information automatically. And the machine reads a great deal, or reproduces uh, these typewritten pages a great deal faster than uh, humans Yes, this tended. machine is operating at 200 characters per second, as you will see it. As opposed to how many characters per second for, for a human? Uh, oh, on the order of uh, three to seven, depending on how well they do. Three to seven, as opposed to a ratio of 250 per second. All right, let's open the curtain and take a look at the machine. We'll try to see how it operates. Here we go. <laughs> uh, would you first introduce us to your colleague, sir? My colleague is Howard Silsby, who was project engineer on this development. Hi, Gary Moore, like you meet. Nice to see you. Now, first, let's get Cass Gaylord and his camera in here, because we want to, even if we do get a camera on screen, we want to first have you talk us through before we give an actual demonstration. Right. Well, this spot of light that you see here is actually what performs the reading operation. An image is taken of the paper as it goes through, and the information is sent over to the computer portion of the equipment where the information is analyzed, and then the information is sent out here to this punch tape, which, as I said before, comes out at 240 characters per second. That tape is then fed into this flexor writer, which will give you an exactly duplicate copy of what Henry has already typed out. Now, here we have what Henry has written. Let's put it through the Farrington machine, and we'll find out what Henry had on his mind tonight as we sat there so blithely. Here we go. Okay, Howard, turn on. <laughs> now, in a moment, you'll see the paper come in, and the machine will be lining up on the first line. Then it will start reading the line, and after a little while, you'll see the tape coming out over here on the other side. We've got a lot of periods in here, I can see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. Anyway, as you see, the information is being punched over here out of this punch, which operates at that speed. Now, the information has already gone through, and at this point, Howard will take the tape and put it into the flexor writer here, and we'll see what... Uh, uh, what Henry had in his mind? Right. All right, now you will see an exact reproduction. Let's get Henry's copy out here. This is what was fed into the machine. Uh, can we get that from us? Here we go. He's not a doctor. Boy, is this a silly show. She's a pretty girl. A little too tall for me, but very pretty just the same. I wonder if this thing is connected to something which will blow up a bridge. In which case, we will all go together. If it can analyze, well, I'm a little ahead of you. If it can analyze this junk, it must be one heck of a machine. All right, let's cut it off. <laughs> Pretty fascinating. Now, Mr. Shepard, what is the current usage of the Farrington machine? Well, the 27. Uh, machines we presently have in commercial operation are all in accounting mm -hmm. operations. But we're working on some things which are uh, perhaps a little more interesting than that. For example, language translation is one of the applications of the machine. You mean if you put a, so a copy of something in in English that the machine can translate it into Russian, let us say? Uh, essentially, it, it performs a big part of that operation, although it's not the entire operation. Wow. But uh, then mail sorting is another application. Possibly you've heard about this. In any event, we can read real mail and sort it into pockets according to destinations of cities that it might be going to. In other words, the machine to. can read where it says on the, on the letter Boston and throws it into the Boston In the bin, Boston huh? pocket, that's right. Well, friends, pretty soon we'll all be out of work. That's the way it goes. <laughs> want to thank you very much, sir. It's been a fascinating evening talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much indeed for your demonstration. Thank you, Farrington.